let me first take a minute to welcome everyone for joining this and to also thank you for participating in this discussion group. Um, we're hoping, well, this is initially a collaboration among all of the major metropolitan bar associations throughout Ohio, Dayton, Toledo, Akron, Cincinnati, Columbus, and Cleveland. Um, to sort of better understand the challenges that our members are experiencing in managing a law practice uh, while also having to perhaps homeschool your children and or just parent your children while you are working. Um, I understand that that can be challenging, particularly as we're all getting ready to begin the school year um, in different circumstances. When uh, the COVID hit and the schools shut down, it was somewhat sudden and uh, we all just made it work and this could be a much more long-term solution. So it's helpful for us to hear from you what you're experiencing and um, give you an opportunity to have a support group, um, but also give us an opportunity um, to listen and see if there's anything that we can do as a bar association, uh, whether it's additional member services or programs we can offer or whether it's just simply creating a forum like this to give you a support group to lean on. So with that, uh, we're gonna show you a quick video. We have about 80 people from around the state participating in today's discussion group. So again, thank you all for being here. Bear with us a minute as we try to get everyone in the proper chat group uh, or breakout room rather. We have breakout rooms for infants and toddlers, elementary school, middle school and high school. The elementary school will actually be the largest, so it will be the main breakout room. Um, as we go through this, uh, we'll ask you at some point to select which breakout room you would like to be in by clicking on the chat feature when the time comes and letting um, Adam, our um, te technological assistant, I guess, for lack of a better description, uh, make sure we can help get you in the right room. So, Well, let's go ahead and, and begin that conversation um, a little bit. So again, as Jill said, um, thank you all for joining us. I'm Alan Nichols. I'm the executive director of the Akron Bar Association. And we're, we're glad that we're able to be part of the Metro Bars and providing different opportunities like this for our members. So again, we're grateful for your, your presence today. Um, but what we wanted to do was to get everyone kind of on the same page and to begin thinking about what it means to be teaching working and living at home um, this fall as more and more school systems seem to be making that shift to stay at home at least for the first quarter. Um, the first few weeks I've heard various things and I've also heard recently I, I saw a news item that the Summit County um, for those in, in Akron area, Summit County Health Department is putting out a recommendation that there not be any in-person school for at least till, till mid-October. And so um, we're waiting to hear if, the, if that actually happens, because I know that's going to change a number of our plans for the schools that we have in our area. So um, let's go ahead and begin our first poll. And I think, um, um, Carrie, if you're able to do that, and it has to do with employer benefits. So since the onset of COVID-19, has your employer offered any new benefits to you? And please pick all that apply. Um, it's kind of multiple choice, but have you had any changes in some of the offerings that your employer's offering to you? You know, one of the things that we read about is employers have to, that we have to be flexible as parents, but we also, our employers um, are, are being encouraged to be flexible to allow us the opportunity. Um, we've got about 65% um, percent of folks have already voted. So if there's a few more out there, if we go ahead um, and finish up. And then Carrie, once you've got close to 100%, if you'd like to at least, you know, share the results with us. We're at about 80% of folks. Let's go ahead, Carrie, and let's, let's throw those results up there. So, you know, as I said, you know, employers are being encouraged and so flexible individualized work arrangements, more than two thirds. And that's pretty, that's pretty significant because it, you know, now that I, I don't know how many of you are back in your offices yet. I know that the staff at the Akron Bar, we're still working from home. We go in maybe to check the mail 
uh, and that sort of thing. But there are um, a, a lot of folks that have headed back to the office. And so the ability to continue to work from home, I think we've learned that it can be done. And so employers that are continuing to allow their employees, and, and, and which is going to be important as your kids are home, as well as, you know, we don't know how long this is going to be. So that's, that's good news. Um, shortened work weeks, paid sick leave, um, very good. Um, no child re care referral systems, um, some child care subsidies and additional subsidies for health related expenses. But about a third of you have no new benefits. Um, so these are things, maybe these are things that you can talk to your employer about when you, um, when we finish up and as you begin to see and talk to other folks that are in the same situations as you. Carrie, would you um, please launch the second poll that we have? So the second poll is um, talking a little bit about summers. How, during this summer, did you and your children spend, um, how did you spend your time? More times outside, more times watching TV? Um, how many arguments were there in your household? We had a college age son home and he was in the basement and we were all spread out and we saw each other in the lunchroom. And so we tried to keep our um, arguments um, to, a, to a minimum and it seemed to work out. Um, someone's asking the poll, where is an all of the above? Um, so that's great. Um, Carrie, are we close? So more time doing fun things together outside, almost half of you, so that's great. Uh, more time watching TV and movies, um, more time talking with each other, more time making each other frustrated or angry. Um, but no one ignored each other, so that's a good thing. Um, you know, one of the things that, that we keep talking about and hearing about is just the whole, the mental health aspect of all being together and being at home. And so th those are important things to do. And I think that helped us by staying separated and not necessarily ignoring each other. Um, but that's a serious concern as we look forward to, to, to fall or maybe not look forward to it because we're talking about six plus months being all in a house together. So those are important things. And some of the resources that we'll share with you later are talking about mindfulness and taking care of yourself and helping your kids take care of themselves. So we've got one more poll to ask. So Carrie, if you could go ahead and launch that before we start our focus groups. Our, our, so whether your kids are returning to school this fall or attending school virtually, how are you feeling about the start of a new school year? We always used to take pictures of our kids standing in front of the door on the first day of school um, with their backpacks ready to go. Um, not quite the same feel this year, is it? Carrie, are we getting close? Overwhelmed um, and anxious. Um, those are that, that what the depressing part about that is that those are depressing school years normally you know getting those pictures taken and the excitement of getting the new lunchbox the new backpacks and the new clothes and heading off to school and seeing your friends again um, and I think that's that's where a lot of that anxiousness falls into that that's not happening as well as the burden that's now placed more on parents than we've ever had before in terms of helping teach and educate kids. Um, we're going to go ahead. Um, we believe we have the video started, uh, ready to go. So we're going to try one more time. If it doesn't work real quickly, Adam, we're going to pop out and head into groups and I'll explain those in just a moment if that's the case. So Adam, can we do the video? Probably the most common question I've gotten and my partners have gotten in the last two weeks is about what we should do about school. Should I send my kids to school? Should I pick, pick plan A or plan B? What do I think about school? Some of you have kids with asthma or medical health conditions, and some of you work full time, and some of you stay home and are thinking about homeschooling. The decision that you make about school, the one that you make, is the right decision. That's it. There's no wrong decision. Each decision is imperfect. Each has risk. So this is what you need to understand. 
how you choose to think about the decision that you make is what will make it right. How you choose to think about it will create how you feel about it, period. I know you think that advice sucks, but it is true. It is the most important decision in your mind, but it really isn't. It's only because you can't see what the future holds for the choice you're making that makes you feel afraid. And I'm here to tell you, once you decide, just decide. We never have the answer of what the future holds. You have no idea if the decision that you're gonna make is gonna be a good decision or a bad decision, but I want you to know that there isn't a right answer in this choice, and whatever you choose will be right if you choose to think that it is. And if it's not right, you'll adjust. It's okay. Stop marinating in fear. Stop marinating in worry that you're not gonna be right. It isn't serving you. It isn't serving our kids. And it can't be done. There isn't a right. So just do the best you can. So doing the best you can, I think, think is it. And so what we hope to do with today is to give you some starting points um, and some conversation uh, and some comfort but from other people that are going through the same experience that you are right now uh, with your children and their education. So we've developed a series of questions to guide the small group discussions that we're heading into. Um, we'll in, be in there for about 30 minutes. Um, after that, we'll kind of gather back into the larger group um, and share answers and themes. And we've asked the facilitators to come back with two or three main thoughts or ideas that, they, um, that seem to resonate with your groups um, and we'll share those. The other thing that we plan to do um, that will help us as bar associations to kind of determine ways that we can continue to help you as we move forward. So our go goal is to be mindful of your time and be done by one o'clock. So I wanna thank our four facilitators, um, infants and toddlers, we've got Carrie Burns. Um, for um, parents of elementary students, we have Kristen Booth. Middle schoolers, we have Mark Weicker. And for high schoolers, we have Mary Beth Vehorn. So we're gonna to split to those groups now I want to thank all of them. Now, you, you answered those questions um, when you um, registered to say what group you'd like to be in. If somehow you've ended up in the wrong group, that's the time to use the chat feature to the Columbus Bar. Um, Adam is the host and that's where he is and he can try to get you popped into the correct group. Um, we'll do the best we can. Sometimes technology works for us and sometimes it doesn't. But Adam, go ahead and make that switch and we'll see you all in about 30 minutes. So is everybody in this group here for elementary school age? And nobody needs to be switched. All right, that's great. Well, we can get started. Um, my name is Kristen Booth and um, I am facilitating the elementary education room because I have a first grader and a fourth grader this fall. Um, so what I'm hoping is you guys are going to give me all the answers because um, I need them because it was a disaster, a disaster in the spring. Um, so just throw out your great ideas and I'll write them down and then we'll be done. It should be that easy, right? Anybody? No? Raise your hand. You got the idea? No? No? Nobody? Okay. All right. What we're going to do is the idea here is we need to support each other, first of all. That, that's the first thing. Whether you want to send your kids to school, whether you don't want to send your kids to school, either way, just, you know, the, the support that we offer each other is going to be um, what we need at this time. Um, I would say the best way for us to start is um, just if people want to throw out what their biggest concerns are, what we're trying to do, the, the collective bar associations are trying to 
be a support group. So if we could throw out what our greatest concerns are, um, we'll start there. Um, just go ahead and unmute yourself and throw those ideas out. I'd love to hear them. Um, otherwise, I probably have 110, 120 I could throw out, but I don't want to do that. So um, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say and what your biggest concerns are right now. Nobody? Not one concern? This is Eric Drescher speaking. Can you Hi. hear me? Yep. All right. Um, our biggest concern at our law firm, a small law firm up in Sylvania, Ohio, is uh, the fact that um, both parents are working. One's a university professor, and obviously I'm a full-time attorney. Um, so we've already organized, if the kids have to go to school online, uh, bringing the kids into the office. So um, I've had to go around and talk to staff about that. And uh, one of the staff members is also bringing their kid in. Um, it's going to be like we're running a, uh, a law office and a daycare center at the same time, sort of. That's great. Any other concerns? I think a concern is um, dividing your time. If you work all day, you come home, if, if that's when you choose to do your remote learning, how do you do that? You know, I'm, I'm a grandma, I don't have any young kids, but I homeschool, I worked full time, went to school full time, homeschooled my son. It's not easy, but you have to be dedicated. And I think a certain concern that I've seen from a lot of parents at the school is, how are we gonna do that? How do you adjust your time? What do you do? For, for us, it's not even an issue of that because we're our remote school is during the school day. So how do I work and remote school? Because it's a live video stream. So I don't have the option of rearranging my kids school to accommodate me working during the day and going to the office, um, you know, which then leaves me trying to, to scramble to figure out what am I going to do? Start my work day at 3 PM. Mm -hmm. Well, I still have to feed my kids. I still have to have them doing homework that they need to do. Um, and so that's going to be a, a very big challenge for us. Um, and even though my employer is, is flexible, they still expect me to work 40 hours a week. <laughs> so, you know, how am I going to homeschool two children uh, for, six or so hours a day and work 40 hours a week. I had the same question when I was going through everything. This is Diana Bittner. Um, and I have a little bit different situation because I actually moved out of the state of Ohio uh, for a job, and but I'm still staying as a member of the Toledo Bar Association. Um, but I'm, I moved to a place where I have no assistance. I have no family, no friends, no help. Um, and I'm a high risk myself for anything uh, COVID related. So I, I had to weigh on top of everything else, the issue of sending my son to school and him possibly bringing something home to me. And even if I get a mild case of the coronavirus, if I'm down at all, I've got nobody to help with my kids. And I've got two young ones. I've got a kindergartner and a preschooler. So it's, you know, just that anxiety on top of it of, you know, if you, if you I kind of liked in that video where she said that, you know, there is no wrong decision, but my thought has always been, if I make the wrong decision, you can't take it back once something happens. And, you know, so my son has special needs. Do I, am I making a mistake by keeping him home and, and depriving him of his contact with his special education teachers? Or can I handle it, which I think I, I can handle it in, basically, but then there's that, you know, am I depriving him or am I putting myself at risk if I send him to school? So it was just this, catch 22 feeling is what was really driving me nuts about the decision. That definitely is tough when you don't have family around. Yes. Any other thoughts, ideas, concerns? Yeah, similar to those two, um, I, I'm kind of in an in-between stage where my son would have been in the last year of preschool. So we don't have him registered for anything. He was in full day daycare. And since I'm working from home, he's home with me all day. Um, so really just that balance, um, trying to figure out how I can keep him on track to be learning, but then also be able to work 40 hours a week. Um, 
I don't know how I'm going to manage that to kind of monitor him if he's doing some kind of online learning. Um, and then just, you know, continue to balance doing work and I do workers compensation. So I have hearings from time to time over the phone. And it has been such a challenge to try to do a hearing with a four year old in the background. <laughs> so <Sometimes laughs> I find myself walking up and down the stairs with a laptop and like reading over the phone so that he's not interrupting me. Um, so I've definitely developed some uh, additional skills that I didn't have before, but that's just kind of coming up with a plan for school on my own because he's not enrolled in any program. And then also, um, you know, balancing that with work. This is Beth Weinweth. Hi, everybody. Um, hi, Kristen. Hi. Um, hi. I, I am in a really fortunate position in that my kids are nine and 10. So they're a little older and, and pretty mature. And I think going to be able to manage their virtual learning pretty well um, on their own. But also my husband is a part-time um, university professor. And so he's going to be working from home, teaching from home and can really help manage the kids' studies. I've wondered though, for folks who are not in that position, if anybody has looked into the idea of, you know, sort of engaging a high school or college student who may also be doing studies remotely to sort of come in and sort of be a part of your family and be your like kids kind of learning coach. That's something that I would think I might consider if I needed that. And I wonder too, if that might be a really good opportunity for parents of high school and college students to get their kids some responsibility and, um, you know, get them out of the house, get them engaged, that kind of thing. And I was just curious if anybody had looked into that or explored that as a, as a potential helping solution. I'll, I'll chime in. Yeah, we've considered it. We um, ended up having to hire two college sitters over the summer, and they were great. One is returning to the University of Michigan, although she suspects she'll be home rather quickly. Um, let me backtrack. We have an infant who's a year. We have a um, five-year-old going into kindergarten and a seven-year-old going into second grade. Um, the remaining sitter is amazing, um, but she, and she's an education major. She does have availability twice a week, but she's moving in back onto campus with four roommates. So, uh, you know, when you're being careful about infection and exposure, then you have to worry about who are the four roommates, who do the four roommates see, um, you know, it's a possibility that everyone can wear masks when she comes to the house. Um, but, you know, th that's something you have to think about. Um, our oldest has um, some special needs. And so, um, you know, we want to make sure that she's understanding the material, she's getting it. Um, obviously, this is not going to be an excelling academic year for anyone. Um, but my um, husband is a solo practitioner. And Eric, maybe he needs to talk to you because he, for some reason, thinks that the kids can't come down to the office and watch their iPads um, for their Zoom sessions. And in our district, we don't even know exactly what distance learning will look like, despite the fact that it's supposed to start next Wednesday. Um, so there is some hands-on elements, you know, for the Zoom. It's not like we can just come home in the evening and teach them. I work at the court. Uh, my employer is as flexible as he can be, um, but, you know, if you're in a court-based setting, there are times you need to be at court, and traipsing two kids into the courthouse during COVID doesn't seem like the best idea either. Um, so we're, we're not quite sure. We have a potential child care situation at their after-school program. Um, I'm not sure if they have enough enrollment for it to work, but they're really just supervising the kids on their iPads, which, and it's a fortune, it would be like putting both of the kids back in daycare to send them full time. And that um, isn't going to work. So that's what we're looking at. Now, Elizabeth, how did you find those um, college students that were, that you're going to have help? How did you go um, about? Well, I don't, I don't, I have one sitter that's carrying over. Um, 
but I found them for the summer. I just asked everybody I know. I'm okay. sort of a lunatic and I just would text people. Um, one of them is the daughter of an attorney that practices in the court um, that I know. And she had sat for us a couple times, um, like a year or two ago. So I reached out and um, the other one was a blind find on Nextdoor, the app, which is something I would never normally do, but I was able, it was her father that put the post on for her and I figured out who her dad was. And based on who her dad was, one of my friends works underneath him. Um, and I asked about the father and based on the connections, I was um, assured that this wouldn't, you know, that it wouldn't be too risky. And they've both turned out to be wonderful. It worked out really well, but it's extremely expensive. It's not something we were um, looking to do necessarily. Obviously, we'll, you know, you'll make it work, but it's not, it's not easy to find. For, for us, it's not easy because we don't just sign anybody up. Um, yeah, I see care.com. I've never used it. A lot of people have had great luck with it. And I think that, you know, there might be, there's a run on these types of sitters too. Um, everybody's looking for them to turn into pods for teachers. That was another suggestion. You know, people are teaming up with other parents and lumping kids together and having a teacher, but we don't live in the kind of house that I can have six other second graders over to host a Zoom session. That's just not something at this moment we're interested in, but. Yeah. Now our, our neighborhood has, or I should say like our, in our subdivision, there's a group of parents that are, we've been discussing having certain days where they go to one house and then another house so that each parent will have a dedicated day where they can schedule appointments and do things that they need to do. But then the concern comes up, well, what's the difference between that and them going to school? Is it safe? Is it not safe? Um, has anybody done that with other parents or other students had kind of group settings outside of school at all? This is Eric Drescher speaking. Um, we actually have a learning pod set up with uh, our neighbors. We're, I'm actually, a, uh, my firm is in Sylvania, but our kids go to a small rural district in Michigan. So um, the kindergarten class is only about eight kids and they're dividing them up into two uh, learning pods. And uh, we're actually talking about splitting costs with one of our neighbors on actually hiring a teacher to come in like three days a week to sort of make sure they're following their lesson plan and that sort of stuff. Um, but once again, it's expensive because you're hiring a teacher and you're just dividing it by six kids or something. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, not something everybody budgets for. Right. For us, we've had some folks that have contacted the schools. I know down here in Cincinnati, there are a lot of schools that in essence uh, canceled all of their student teachers. And some folks have found resources by contacting uh, their kids' teachers, former teachers, current teachers to say, hey, do you know who some of these folks are? And reached out to them because they now, you know, are not student teaching. <laughs> um, especially now they're not because almost all the schools are going remote and have found some resources there in terms of student teachers. Um, but, you know, but again, there's obviously also the, the cost involved, um, which is prohibitive in a number of cases. And um, I know there's a number of organizations down here that are offering, in essence, sort of a daycare scenario with a supervisor who's going to sit there in a room of, you know, five or six kids and in essence, help them with their remote learning. Um, you know, so there are, I, I know four or five down here in Cincinnati that are doing that if you can afford it. And if you're willing to accept uh, them going someplace and being in a group, um, you know, for us, the challenge is, all right, which one of these providers have we used before? Which ones are we comfortable with? Um, which ones have we observed, you know, so far are really following all of the, the safety protocols? Um, so just a thought. Yeah, that's great. Now for those that don't have the ability to, um, I guess group together, um, have, have any of you found, cause when I watch, I watch so many different videos about, 
um, the topic of, you know, homeschooling your kids while you're trying to work, the number one thing people say is to create a schedule. And it sounds fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. It didn't work here. I, that was my fault. I'm quite sure. Um, have any of you been successful in creating a schedule where you're getting some work done and they're getting some work done that you want to throw out to the rest of us? Any like suggestions or things that worked or maybe even things that didn't work? I've found that during the summer, it's been really helpful to just let my kids stay up till midnight and then they sleep till 10. Yeah. I, <laughs> me too. Yep. I loved that. Yep. I do all my emails first thing in the morning before everybody gets up and figure out a plan for the day. Um, but now when they go to school, I'm trying to figure out one, how I'm going to wake them up in the mornings if I have to, because some... Right now, our district has not decided as to whether they're going to have teachers actually teaching where the kids have to go to school online or not. So um, that's kind of, kind of our fear right now is they may have to do that. And how are we going to set it up? Um, and we just still haven't, haven't been able to come up with the perfect schedule yet, which there probably isn't because your kids are different every day. Um, in elementary school, they don't have nap time. I keep kept hearing on the videos, oh, during nap time, they can do this. Okay, well, you know, I need a nap time. My kids will not take a nap. Um, and one of the other tips that I kept coming across was dedicated workspaces at your house. Do you all find that that's helpful, not helpful? Do you do that? Um, do you not do that? Any ideas on that? I actually practice that. We have a dedicated workspace, not only in our house for, uh, obviously my wife's uh, a university professor, but and so she's delivering remotely. So she has an area that we kind of use as an office space. Sometimes I work in there. At my office, obviously, I have my own uh, office with the desk and stuff, but I have a whole uh, another room added onto the office that is just basically empty space. That kind of gets turned into the lids of the kids' uh, learning area. So that has multiple computers in it, blocks for the youngest. I have a, he's going to be three, actually tomorrow. Um, so the youngest is there, and then I have a five-year-old going into kindergarten. So um, it's it does not look anything like a law office traditionally looks and uh, we never ever did any of this and you know they never told you about this in law school <laughs> that might be a new course for the fall let's uh if anybody wants to put that together i would definitely sign up um how about curriculum challenges um have any of you run into curriculum challenges with your kids i keep hearing you know the new math nobody does math the same way um, but are there any suggestions that anybody can throw out that um, that where they've had a curriculum challenge with their kids, but they were able to, um, I guess, get over it and, and how you did that? If you can throw out some ideas, that would be very helpful. Ah, nobody does the new math. I'll make one suggestion as a former community college instructor. Um, whether or not it would work, I don't know, but um, I had a couple of my students, um, I taught math and English, and a couple of my students told me they were there to help their third, fourth, fifth grader with their homework. Um, so, you know, it gets to the point where the parents were having struggles helping the kids with their homework. Um, so the suggestion I would have is if you do run into a particular part of the curriculum that you're having an issue with, perhaps, you could check with a local um, college. They might have a tutoring center mm -hmm. that they might be willing to answer a quick question or you know, maybe couldn't have your, your child come in, but they might be able to help steer you in the right direction as to where you could find some resources. There's plenty of online resources to help um, with, you know, with uh, specific categories of, of instruction. Um, so that'd be the one suggestion I'd have is we maybe check if you have, there's a tutoring center uh, where they have usually um, part-time faculty members 
serve as the tutors for the students, they might have some resources or at least be able to maybe explain if you have, if you're working with, you know, one particular issue on, you know, metric conversions, maybe that, uh, that teacher could at least give you a, a different way of explaining it that might be more understandable to both you and your, and your child. Just a suggestion. That's a really good, good idea. Double check the local colleges. All right, I know we're gonna be breaking or bringing the groups back together. I, one more thing that I think we should go through is the, the number one feeling that came up in those um, initial questions that we did at the beginning, um, the number one feeling was overwhelmed. Um, we need to find the best ways to um, help ourselves. Have any of you, um, or I mean, do you have questions about resources for helping yourself? Or do you have ideas or things that you've done that have been helpful that you can provide to the group and give some suggestions? When you say uh, help yourself, do you mean like uh, mentally or? Yep, absolutely. Uh, okay, okay. Yep. yep, that overwhelmed feeling. What can you, because I know in our profession there tends to be, um, sometimes substance abuse and, th and different things like that. Like, what can we do to get over that overwhelmed feeling or at least deal with it? Have, have any of you found anything that helps you in particular um, or that you've been wanting to do or try or... Um... I actually bought a uh, Bob stroller, the double stroller, because I have a five-year-old and a gonna be three. And I go running with them for about an hour every day. So I leave the office and come back. But my office is an old uh, apartment building. So it has uh, shower facilities and, you know, laundry room and that kind of stuff. So um, I go running for an hour in the morning. And that during that hour, they stop at, we stop at the park and they play for a little bit. So I think physical activity is, is good. it's good not only for me, but it's really good for them because it breaks up their, their learning day. Similarly, I've been finding that if I take a walk in the morning, like just getting outside the house because I am at the house so much more, mm -hmm. I find my mental health is a lot better on days where I just go somewhere, change of scene, you know, the exercise, yes, but, but a lot of it's just the change of scene, going somewhere other than, you know, my office in my house and my house in my house <laughs> helps, <laughs> helps a lot. Now, do you take your kids? Do you leave them home? Do you, is that your time? Yeah, I leave them home. They're, they're, they're either my husband's here with them or mm -hmm. we just leave them because they're old enough. Yeah. And that, that makes a huge difference. I think if they were younger, um, we'd have to switch off more. But, yeah. Uh, Any other yeah, ideas? This is, this is Rick. I, I, um, I know that it's not always easy or possible sometimes, but I think you have to shoot your partners or your boss straight about, um, you know, how this is going to work um, and, and what you're, how you're going to make it work and that it's going to be, you know, we're, we're a small real estate firm and I'm a partner at the firm. And um, I mean, I told my boss, I told my partner, like, you know, this is all over the board and in the, in the spring and he, I mean, he totally got in. He was in the same boat, but just having that conversation about like expectations and, you know, flexibility and, um, you know, kind of relieves a lot of the, like you're, you know, letting someone down on your team. If, you know, you're taking care of your kids schooling for a couple hours or doing something like that. So I would just encourage everybody to have open and frank conversations with people on their, you know, people on their team about here's what here's how I'm thinking this is going to work and here's my schedule to a certain extent and um here's when I'm going to be unavailable but I'm you know I'm making it up or whatever the case may be that you come to it it's I think it's productive and relieves some of that anxiety or overwhelming feeling Any other thoughts?
you know, there's a lot of you that haven't said anything. It seems like people might just not know what to do at this point in time. So what is it that your local bar association can provide? What types of services, what types of um, support would you want your local bar association to provide during this time? I'm gonna, this is Darcy Schaefer, and I work for one of the judges here at Franklin County. Um, and I wanted to kind of throw out there too, not so much just your bar association, but I have uh, a rising first grader and a rising third grader. And I will not go far as far as to speak for all of the judges here, but from my experience, they're extremely willing to work for, with you guys and want and are willing to grant you extensions and um, along the same lines of what Rick said, just be upfront with the judge, let them know you need some time um, and, and we'll uh, make it work. But from a, a client standpoint, I am not that far outside of private practice and I understand that your clients may not be um, as willing to be as flexible and they're looking for their cases or their issues to be resolved. And especially if you're dealing with somebody that, uh, you know, a plaintiffs in a car accident might need money or a workers comp case, um, unemployment cases, those sorts of things, you know, you gotta be upfront with them too and just say, hey, you know, this, is strange times for everybody and if you want your case resolved quickly we need to be flexible we need to to work on this um but as far as the answers i mean i listened to everybody and, and what everybody had to say we're we're talking about learning pods in our family and hiring a nanny for part-time to help us with learning pods but it wasn't something that was necessarily in the budget for this year so mm -hmm. that's we're, we're dealing with all of that. So it is nice, if nothing else, to see that there are so many others of us out there in the same position and that we're not alone. Yeah. And that kind of helps my mental health <laughs> as well. Yeah. yeah. And that's kind of why they created this program is we, we definitely want to be able to support everyone. Um, it's a tough time for everybody. And you know, to, to feel like you're alone in it is, makes it 10 times harder. Um, so, you know, what we're trying to do is create and be a resource. So if people want to email your local bar with ideas or suggestions or, um, you know, if, if you want to set up local support groups, um, different things like that, um, just reach out. Uh, that's, you know, we're trying to create and, and we're trying to get some input on what we should create because we don't want the local bars when we were talking about this, don't want to put things together that aren't going to be helpful. You, the last thing you need is one more meeting to come to, one more thing to do, one more thing on your agenda, one more Zoom meeting. That's not going to be helpful. Um, so if, if, I mean, you can always email me, you can email your local bar with suggestions, ideas. I mean, even so much as videos, things like that um, would be really helpful and we would really appreciate it. Looks like our groups are coming back together. So I will go ahead and mute myself. Thank you everybody for participating. It was a, a great learning experience for me. Um, and we will let Jill probably, I think, take over. Careful what you wish for. Um, as we yeah, come here, I think uh, Carrie is going to help with the takeaways from each of the groups to share with the full group and yeah. about where we go from here. Well, thank you everyone for participating today. We were a small but mighty crowd in the infant and toddler's um, room. Um, and I think what we talked about the most was being creative and adaptable that um, you know, week to week things change um, and you just kind of got to roll with the punches and, and be open to what, what's going to happen. We talked um, a lot about pods. It's something I also have a three-year-old, so I, I was able to participate in this. Um, 
talking about neighborhoods getting together and having small pods of, of kids together and families that you feel comfortable with. But it's a whole new vetting process um, when you meet a new family or a new nanny or babysitter, you know, how are you staying socially distant? Are you going to restaurants? Did you go to Florida for, you know, summer vacation? There's just, and, and everyone's comfort level is so different that it's difficult sometimes. My anecdote was that I had found a family, we were clicking, we were going to get our kids together. And I wasn't thinking about my first grader that is going to school in the fall. And I said, oh, by the way, I, she's going and they said yeah and we're not interested anymore because she'll be in school so just being open and honest and and communicative it's 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 definitely a whole new way of addressing child care and preschool um and and we're all navigating it together so giving everyone grace is is i think key um and so next was elementary school which was Kristen, right you're on mute, Kristen. I think by now I have this under control, but oh, goodness. Um, yeah, I, we had some, some good takeaways. Um, the first thing it seemed like people were mentioning was to be upfront, whether it's with judges, with clients, or with your partners or bosses or people that run the firm, is you, you have to be upfront. Um, somebody had mentioned that they work for a judge and that the judges are uh, being very flexible, but you just have to make sure that you um, are upfront about it, needing extra time and different things like that. Um, and another thing we discussed quite a bit was getting assistance, which you had mentioned the pods, um, but somebody had mentioned having uh, local college students come in to help. Um, as well as their, I guess, student teachers that normally would be doing their student teaching aren't going to be doing it now. Um, so contacting the schools and asking if possibly they have um, student teachers that would be willing to help um, or come in. Um, and we also talked a little bit about how like overwhelmed was the number one feeling that people had. Um, and we just talked, you know, a little bit about uh, different things that we could do to take care of ourselves. Physical activity was pretty much what was talked about, just as much as going for a walk, going for a run, um, things like that. Uh, so I would say those were our key takeaways. And I also, you know, asked if, if people have suggestions or things to contact the bar and let the bar associations know um, what type of support that they do need. Um, and we'd like to, to help out in any way possible. Absolutely. Thanks, Kristen. Um, on to Mark, you had middle schoolers, correct? That's right. Yeah, we had a, a small group, but I thought there was some good um, pragmatic suggestions in the group. We, uh, no one felt equipped to teach our children or help teach our children. Um, and uh, so the discussion uh, turned to you know, how the bar might, um, you know, help with that concern. And so uh, one of the suggestions was that maybe um, we could put, to, put together a database of, um, first of all, you know, child care referrals. So places that offer child care that are still open and available, you know, that's changed. And um, so maybe uh, locally, uh, from the local bars, a, a, a list of available child care. And then along with that, maybe even a, a database and or a listserv of um, attorneys who have older kids that might be available to babysit uh, if needed. And then, uh, and then definitely uh, places that offer tutoring or uh, children of attorneys who would be available, either high school or college students uh, to tutor, because that would help with the uh, not feeling equipped to help our students with uh, or help our children with uh, certain subjects. So I thought that was good. And then one other thing um, uh, that came out was uh, one of the suggestions by the attorneys in the group was to put a permanent um, out of office message um, in your email so that everyone knows that you might not be responding, you know, as quickly as you normally would. And I thought that uh, went well with uh, what Kristen mentioned about uh, communicating with your employer and your clients about your availability. So um, yeah, a couple good things with the middle school group. 
Thanks, Mark. And Mary Beth. Uh, so I met with the high school parents and um, caregivers and um, one of the main things that we talked about was uh, the kind of the lack of structure that uh, everyone was faced with when the um, when the original shutdown happened and the the need for um, high school students especially to have um, that kind of structure in their um, in their learning uh, and so their hope is that that the, 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 the teachers and the um, schools have been figuring out how to do that um, and uh, but uh, but unfortunately a lot all the all the um, caregivers hadn't hadn't yet really heard a specific plan about what the school day was actually going to look like uh, we talked a lot about students with special needs and um, how virtual learning um, in in many ways um, didn't work for them very well the first um, uh, this past school year and um, and some of the practical uh, things that came out um, uh, that that parents talked about making a change in their in their um, home this school year, which was going to be primarily virtual, was to um, each individual student have their per, uh, no, their own permanent workspace um, in the house, uh, and to have more more rules in place for for what what the expectations were for getting work done, um, and then um, uh, also Lisa also talked about um, a uh, PTA uh, Facebook group that really uh, drilled down and got specific for each grade level and each specific class to help with the um, with uh, with supporting the parents in case you know their their teenage son didn't want to share with them what the assignment was the the, the Facebook group of parents could help check on that <laughs> that's all I have to share thanks Mary Beth I think we have two final poll questions that will help us um, plan. We want to do more of these conversations. If everyone finds them helpful, we, we do want to do additional programming. So if we could start with the first poll question. So would you like to participate? Did you find this helpful? I, I found it helpful personally. So hopefully, um, Others did, and we can do this again. Once we have enough, I don't think we necessarily need to show those results, but we can go on to the next question. Great. Well, thank you. <laughs> Happy to hear it was it was helpful for people. And then the final question. Are there additional topics? And if there are, are, are topics on here that you, you don't see or you would like addressed, um, you can direct those into the chat um, or email your local bar associations. Um, I know Akron and Cleveland have both put some helpful resources on our web pages. I think it's going to be coming to the other bar associations as well. Um, so check there, we have things for uh, parents, for students, um, different articles that we found that we thought were helpful that may be helpful for others. Um, and please stay tuned for additional programming. Flexible work arrangements seems to be the topic to talk about. So stay tuned, hopefully we can put something together. And with that, if no one has anything else, I think we're done. Thanks so much everyone for being here today. Thanks everybody. And good luck in the fall.